Vince McMahon physically returning to a WWE show for the first time, I think, at this past Raw. And he also turned up with a moustache, apparently. But that was like the uh, big the big story. But uh, there's no photos of it, so we can't comment on it. And uh, who better to comment on a moustache than, than you, of course? Well, I saw a, a photo of him with a little moustache. He was doctored. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and I, I know the, exactly the photo as well, but I, uh, it was, okay. was doctored that one. Um, he reportedly sat at Gorilla all night, but wasn't barking orders like he used to do at Triple H, who was in charge. But apparently, there were more Vinceisms that are sneaking back into WWE, like calling Chad Gable short and ugly. Uh, assuming Michael Cole is saying this of all people, that would be quite amusing. And Johnny Gargano is a comic book reading nerd, so they're sort of going back towards making fun of whoever's sh- shorter on the roster for some reason. So, uh, have you noticed the last month or two some slight Vince McMahon touches on creative, maybe? Well, just from what I've heard, but I still have my doubts of whether Vince is going to ease his way back in there like he was before. I think he's just, they, they're letting him do this now. While he sits in on, at the, at the gorilla position and mans the headset, because that's where he used to sit. You go up there to the gorilla, you're getting ready to go on. There was Vince sitting right up next to the wall behind uh, with earphones on, and he's directing the whole show. And I've heard a lot of people get, a lot of those announcers get, I mean, literally cussed out. And then somebody could come back from the ring. If he didn't like the match, oh, he'd get up and, I mean, blast them in front of everybody. That's why Vince Vince didn't rule with finesse. He ruled with, uh, I mean, with with power, because he'd get up and he he just blast you verbally in front of everybody. He'd embarrass the guy, and, and actually he would embarrass the people just listening to him, because whatever the guy did is is it worth getting up and making an ass out of yourself and making the guy look like. Uh, embarrass the guy in front of everybody else. It doesn't make you a leader that people want to follow. And I'm not saying he's he, he's led before and he's led well. But as he got older, I think he got. I mean, I think when he hit his, he got into his 60s. He got more. I don't know, power hungry. I guess I could put it that way. But he wouldn't hold back on. On cussing somebody else. I mean, that was his go-to. That was his go-to scheme to get things done. Did you ever do guest commentary uh, during the Zeb Coulter run? I, I did one time. Yeah. Did you have Vince's I, Vince yelling? No. Well, Peter yelled at me. I would just... see for him to yell at me out there, which would have thrown me off. I mean, the announcers were used to it. They were listening for it. I wasn't. And I wasn't I wasn't hearing Vince. The headset I had on, I didn't even hear Vince say anything. Or if the headset I had on, uh, if Vince had said, he must have not have said anything, or I wasn't keyed into Vince's conversation with the other two announcers. I didn't hear anything. I was talking to John and I was talking to Michael. Do you know if, uh, I don't know if, uh... JBL was doing commentary this time. I can't remember, but I know Jerry yeah. probably still was. But what did they say uh, that Vince was yelling at them on the headsets? Do you remember? I don't think he yelled at Lawler. He never did for some reason. I don't think he yelled at JBL either. His go-to yeller, <laughs> old <laughs> old yeller, the, the old yeller, uh, he. Uh, I guess he saved that for Michael Cole because Michael Cole, he's the pitch man. He's the one talking about Fox or or whatever they had going on, and uh, he would have to say something for an advertiser. That was that was reserved for him, basically. Mm. And he may have corrected some guys, I guess, like, like JBL and Lawler. But I asked Lawler one one time. I said, "Does does he?" fucking scream at you and he said no because he had a, I, I think he, he had a different 
a, a different relationship with Vince than everybody else. See, everybody else would have to get to TV at like four o'clock, five o'clock. I don't know, uh, at two o'clock. Lawler would walk in at five o'clock, five thirty, six. And he told them one time, don't tell me what's going on on the show because I want to be, I want to, I want to see it like a fan sees it. Which was bull crap because Lawler just didn't want to be there. Early. <laughs> so by saying that, Vince said, oh yeah, that's good. That's good, Jerry. That's good thinking. So Lawler could walk in at any time, which was great for him. And he'd say, somebody said, well, this is what's going on. They would only tell him something that he had to know. That like he would, if he did an in ring or if he had to interview somebody, it only tell him tell him what he needed to know. The rest of it, Lawler was seeing it at the same time the fans at home were seeing it. So I, I asked him one them. I said, "How do you do that?" He said, "I don't know." He laughed. Lucky, I guess. Walked off. <laughs> he's, you know, he's been pulling that since the nineties, I think, or at least the early two thousands. See, Lawler about you know how much thought Lawler used to put into booking Memphis TV. I swear to God, when he would get it, see him and Jerry Jarrett used to switch the roles back and forth. Mm -hmm. Lawler never booked through the fall. You know why? It's because it's NFL season. Football season. He Mm -hmm. had to go follow the Cleveland Browns, and he'd always make those weekend trips to Cleveland to watch them play. And, uh, so Jerry Jarrett would take over, and Jerry Jarrett would book all through the winter. Come the spring, Jerry would he'd take the spring and he'd take the summer. Now the summer, traditionally, for old wrestling territories, was was the best time of year. Kids were out of school. I mean, you don't have to worry about going to a show in the middle of the week, and he he took that over. But actually, it worked because neither one of them suffered from burnout. And he would come back, and I guess when Lawler would come back in the spring, everything would change. Not everything. I mean, the talent would stay the same. He would just adjust what was going on there and take it through the summer, which was actually worked great for, for Memphis. Because mm-hmm. it was Memphis, to me, was always a territory that was really ahead of its time. The first music videos were done in Memphis and outside the studio stuff. and But that was Lawler just sitting back and all of a sudden going down the road and having an idea. And that's how much thought he would put into it. I have seen Lawler show up at Memphis TV at 10 o'clock. And I said, <laughs> I asked him a day to come in. I said, what am I doing today? He said, I don't know. I haven't booked it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Then he would go back in the office, which was down the hallway. It's where Vince and uh, and the announcer would stay with with a Lance, and he would he would book the show. And then from and he went live, alive. I don't care if you were ready or not. Eleven o'clock, wrestling was live, and he would he would book it. And sometimes they'd book it in fifteen minutes. An hour and a half show, they'd book it and they'd run it. Crazy, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, sometimes w- the police would turn up to arrest uh, Billy Joe Travis as well, but we've told that story. I do. <laughs> but oh, yeah. I love that. That, that was that was a good story. But <laughs> yeah, that's he would spend the minimum amount possible sometimes on 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 booking wrestling, and we would go to these shows. He he just got hot and. Like from eighty one to eighty four, that was a very very hot territory, mm-hmm. and put out great great TV, had great ratings, and we've talked about this before. He would do ratings like, like prime time ratings. Uh, he would he would do ratings that really challenged Dallas, the big show back in the back in the eighties. Dallas, I don't know what Dallas would do, but wrestling would do like 21, 22 rating. That's unbelievable. So 
They could do something like that now. Well, they bite but your if arm we off had the, it. if we had the type of wrestling they have now on Memphis TV, eh, it wouldn't have drawn so much. No, because people look at it, I, you know, I don't know. <laughs>